one, Jamie here. Welcome back. I'm just going to fix the camera here. Um, there we go. Welcome back to another weekend vlog. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about Liverpool's match against Crystal Palace and uh, Tomb Raider 3. Because I that's actually a, a, a lot better game than I thought it was. I mean, the first time I played it, I was insanely confused. But we'll get to that when we get to that. For now, let's talk about Liverpool. Um, yep, yeah, 2-0 win against Palace yesterday. Wasn't really much to it, to be honest. I mean, yeah, we, we beat Crystal Palace 2-0. Mane scored twice. We pretty much dominated. Well, not dominated, but we pretty much had control from start to finish. Yeah, average win. Not really much to say. So, yeah, we, yeah, I mean, it's Crystal Palace. I mean, it's, I mean, it, it's Crystal Palace. If we couldn't beat Crystal Palace at home, then, yeah, yeah, there's a thing on my arm, if you're wondering. I, I was watching the Irish Cup final. Linfield against Lauren on Friday night. Yeah, having a yeah a cup final a quarter to eight on a Friday night was uh, weird. And a friend of mine actually, hang on, a friend of mine actually got me the program. So, yeah, that's cool. It's in the Irish Cup final. And uh, the Linfield manager is... Um, this will surprise you. Hang on, where's the picture? There's a the manager there. David Healy. So, yeah. I'm going to have to read through that at some point. Pretty cool. Yeah, Linfield won it. They won 2 1. Shane Lavery and I think Joel Cooper scored. It ended 2 1. I can't remember who scored for Lauren, but yeah, we won anyway. It was in Lurgan, which was odd choice of venue. I think Windsor's on lockdown or something. But anyway, cool that Linfield won the Irish Cup. I am really happy with that. And tomorrow night, they could win the league as well. Tomorrow night, Linfield could win their 55th league title. To go along with Rangers' 55th league title. <laughs> uh, and yeah, there's also some new kits going around. The Liverpool kit. Um, I don't hate it, but I'm not a big fan of it either. I'll just put a picture of it up here. And also, I'll put Tottenham's kit here. Because Tottenham's kit... Tottenham's new kit is literally a white t-shirt with logos stuck onto it. It's possibly the most boring kit I've ever seen. It's literally... Just take... Literally, just find a random white t-shirt in your house, chuck a Tottenham badge onto it, and you've pretty much got their home kit for next season. It's literally just a white t-shirt with logos chucked onto it. I mean, their home kit last year I thought was actually quite nice, but their kit this year, it's a white t-shirt. I mean, a four-year-old could do that. Just take a white t-shirt and draw a Tottenham, and just literally take a white t-shirt... D write the word Tottenham on it, and you've pretty much got their home kit for next season. Liverpool's one um, is all right. I mean, the orange looks weird, and the black on the collar, that kind of feels like Man United. I mean, like, well, I, I have Liverpool ever had black on their home kit? I mean, they have black away kits, but black on a home kit, that just kind of screams of Man United to me. So, yeah, it's still an art, and that was my phone. Ignore that. Um, what else is it? Random, yeah, random people live streaming, whatever. Also, the background of my phone is Alan McGregor. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, Leicester missed out on top four again, which I'm kind of annoyed about. I kind of was hoping they would get it and not Chelsea. Although, I am hoping Chelsea beat City in the final. Because th the last thing on this earth I want is Man City winning the Champions League. And that's a charger, whatever it is. Get up, get up there. Anyway. Anyway, uh, yeah, um, Leicester were 2-1 up. They ended up losing 4-2. They were winning twice. I mean, they only scored two penalties. Um, and speaking of penalties, Man United won. I don't think they got a penalty, though. I can't remember. Was Fern I, I didn't see their team, but was Fernandez even playing? I mean, United have had a good season, but at the same time, since January 2020, they've had 37 penalties. Yes, 37. 37 penalties. That is just ridiculous. Like, 37 penalties. 37! That's ridiculous. And, yeah. Any wonder I hate United? I'm going to stop going on about that now. I think Arsenal beat Brighton 2-0, but... Whatever. Um, yeah, Rangers have gone on beating. I talked about that last week. But, yeah. Um, on to the stuff I wanted to talk about now. Tomb Raider 3. It's actually a lot better than I thought it was. 
I think the first levels are okay. The I mean, the boss... I mean, the level at the end of the India section, uh, the boss level, is actually kind of irritating. Like, you have to find your way to the boss, but it's actually... It's insanely... It's it's not insanely confusing, but... um, It's kind of confusing trying to find your way to the boss. It's literally a giant maze, and you have no idea where you're going. You can literally... You'll run around for 10 minutes, and then you'll fall down a hole, and all of a sudden you're at the boss. I mean, the boss itself is pretty easy once you get to know it. I mean, if you have, like... I, I I mean, when I play Tomb Raider games, I usually just put in the all-weapons cheat, because, you know, why not? I mean, I do... Yeah, I put in the all-weapons... I, I put in the all-weapons cheat when I play Tomb Raider games, because it gets you the med packs as well, which... Actually, I know Tomb Raider is supposed to be about stress, but... It takes a lot of stress off. It actually makes it a lot more fun. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, the only thing I'm not looking forward to in Tomb Raider 3 is the London section. I am not looking forward to the Aldwich again. I hate that level. That, combined with Atlantis and Anniversary. Anniversary is a fantastic game, but Atlantis in that game is just ridiculous. How I beat that, it took me... If you remember my last play from a few months ago... Um, and yeah, I literally finished my Toy Story 2 Let's Play today, by the way. If you haven't checked that out yet, go watch it. Um, anniversary. Anniversary's Atlantis level is flat out ridiculous. Uh, I'm not sure about the original because I don't own the original Tomb Raider yet. Yet, I'm hoping if I go out to... Well, the first time I go to CEX in months will be a good... I don't know, should I... Um, I don't know if I could vlog it, I don't know, but... I'll probably just take some pictures of CEX or something. Just take some pictures of what I got and put it on Twitter or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, um, I am not looking forward to Aldrich or Ludsgate. I was in those two levels. Those two levels, I was in there for a combined three hours. Three hours in two levels. Three hours. Yeah, Aldwich is literally possibly the most confusing level in the history of Tomb Raider. I'm not even kidding. I have n like when I played through that, I had no idea where I was going, no idea what I was doing. I mean, I thought Tomb Raider three was confusing at first, but then after playing through it, I realized it's nowhere near as confusing as I thought it was. It's just I had never played it. I would never, well, I had never played through it. I did play through it a couple of months ago, but um. Yeah, um, it's not it's not as frustrating as I thought it was. Um, but the only thing that's wrong with it is Aldwych and Ludgate. And I've heard the last boss is supposed to be insanely hard as well. But yeah, um, India levels were okay. Apart from the sec apart from the end of the second level. That spike trap where you have to hit two switches and then run down and drop into a door. That's kind of stupid. I mean, you literally have, literally, you have about seven seconds to do that. Seven seconds to hit two switches and run into a door. It's kind of ridiculous. I mean, before I do that, I usually save at that part because it's just ridiculous. Like, how did they, like, surely they could give you at least 15 seconds or something. But like, seven seconds to hit two switches and drop into a door. I mean, Tomb Raider 3 is really good so far. Um, yeah, the India section was okay, apart from that random trap. Um, and here's a tip for anyone playing through Tomb Raider 3. Always pick Nevada first, because at the end of the first Nevada level, spoiler alert, you get captured and you get all your gear taken away. Although, thankfully, I know the weapon cheat, so I can just put that in. Yeah, so always pick Nevada first. Because you get your weapons taken off you, and I don't think you get all of it back. But, uh, yeah. Um, first Nevada level was really good. Um, second one, what was it? The high security compound was actually quite fun. Area 51 was a really fun level. Um, yeah, the part where Lara, at the end of the level, sets off a rocket ship. Yep, sets an entire rocket up into space. To open a hatch. You know she's Lara Croft. She could have easily just booted the door open or something. Like she could have literally just like Lara could have easily just I don't know headbutted the door open. No one knowing Lara, she probably actually would have done that. But yeah, Area Fifty, the Nevada section is actually really fun. The but and there's no boss actually. 
At the end of Area 51, there's a UFO you go into, and yeah, it's actually pretty cool. Area 51's a really cool level. Um, it kind of feels like... And, and part of the, that level actually kind of reminds me of the boat level from Tomb Raider 2 for some reason. Not really. I think it's just like the way the buttons look. I'm not really sure why. It is a cool level, though. Um, like South Pacific Islands, the... Um, what's the first one called? I'm on the crash site right now. What's the one before that called? The uh, Coastal Village. That's an okay level. There's a few annoying jumps in that level, though. In particular, the one, you know that one where you have to, you climb up into, like, this treehouse, and then you have to jump off on the roof of a treehouse into another section. That jump was kind of annoying. Um, yeah. Crash site, so far, is okay. I'm looking forward, I'm actually really looking forward to that part where I get the gun down the rafters in, from, like, a, um, what is it? Inside a ship or something. That's going to be really fun. I'm really looking forward to doing that. And, yeah, that's another thing. I think that section actually has a T-Rex fight in it somewhere. I'm not sure where, but there's a T-Rex fight in that in the South Pacific level somewhere. So, yeah. I mean, I, th I don't think there was a T-Rex fight in Last Revelation. Or Chronicles or Angel of Darkness. I'm not playing through Angel of Darkness again. I, I, I never want to go near that piece of garbage ever again. I hate that game with a passion. Anyway, um... Yeah, that's hard so far. I'm not... Like, the first London level was tolerable. It was okay, but... Aldrich and Lud's Gate... I am just not looking forward to that. At all. Like, at all. I hated those levels with a passion when I first played them. I didn't have any clue where I was going. Or what I was doing. But yeah, and then there's Antarctica. I think Antarctica is actually the last four levels of the game. And actually, weirdly enough... No matter what... Let, uh, no matter what order you choose the levels in, it'll always be... Like, when you go to levels like that, they'll always show up in the order that the game wants you to play through them. I think it's the South Pacific levels, then the Nevada set, uh, then the Nevada levels, and then the London levels, and then Antarctica. Or is it maybe you're supposed... I, I don't know. Anyway, Tomb Raider 3 is actually a lot better than I thought it was. Um, and there's actually... Uh, the uh, theme is actually really good. And I think in the levels, there's actually a different version that plays sometimes... It's the same thing, but it's got, like, a drum beat in it, and it's actually really cool. So, yeah, and Last Revelation is fun, but towards the end, it gets utterly ridiculous. I mean, I... Last last week I was playing it, I got... Well, I I was playing it once ago, but I got to the, you know, the Chambers of Tulune section? That level can do one. Seriously. They expect you to... They expect you, without even telling you, explaining, or even mentioning it, they expect you to find a bottle of nitrous oxide to upgrade the bike. Without even telling you where it is, or that it even exists. Like, nothing about the game even mentions that you need it. Like, the bike is there, there's a jump you need to make, but you can't make the jump unless you have the nitrous oxide. Which the game doesn't even tell you about. That's where I officially gave up. And Last Revelation as well, um has, uh, like, every level is basically, like, connects back to one hub world, so it does get kind of confusing figuring out where you need to go. Uh, I mean, Last Revelation is really good. It's a really good game, but I don't know if I'll ever finish it, because towards the end, it just gets utterly ridiculous. So, yeah, but that's pretty much it, that, guys, for this weekend vlog. Uh, I'm going to go back to playing Tomb Raider 3, and yeah, see you next time.